Hello and welcome to this second section on getting started in Dreamweaver CS6. In the last section we created this blank web page. It's completely empty at the moment, or at least it appears to be completely empty. The truth of that will become apparent in a minute or two's time. This is a page we're going to use to illustrate some basic things about Dreamweaver, so I'm not going to be saving this page in the longer term. You can pretty much do what you like if you're working along with me on this course. Make your own page, make as much of a mess of it as you like. We're going to basically throw it away at the end. After that, we're going to start work on a proper website, and then we will aim to keep the work that we're doing. So again, if you're working along with me in parallel, make sure that after this page you start saving your work carefully. So, let's take this first test trial page, and let's see what we can do with Dreamweaver CS6. Well, first of all, there's a bit of a tradition in the IT world, at least, of using a standard message as the first output of any piece of computer software. So we're going to follow that tradition and we're going to put a message on this page that just says hello world. Now that would appear in a web browser as a page that says hello world. Now with that text on the page and note that if you look at the buttons up here, there are three there called Code, Split and Design. And the Design one is pressed. This is Design View. This means, this is more or less anyway, what a user would see. Now that's not quite true as I'll show you in a moment. But for the purposes of the current exercise, think of that as what people see. Now if I select that text, Notice that at the bottom, in the Properties panel, the thing that's also sometimes referred to as the Property Inspector or the Properties Inspector, I have here a number of controls. All of these things relate to HTML. And HTML, as we'll see later on, which stands for Hypertext Markup Language, is one way of formatting what we've put on the page. Now if I click on the Format button, Paragraph, right drop down there, I have a number of available what are called styles. And one of the styles is Heading 1. Let's see what happens if I select, instead of Paragraph, I select Heading 1. What happens is that my statement, Hello World, takes on a completely different format. It's now bold, it's much larger, the font, can't actually see there what font is used, but I'll explain that to you later on. But one of the important things here is that we can choose from the available formats, heading 1, let's try heading 2, let's try heading 3. So you see each of them achieves a different effect. Now, although you can't see on the page how that's done, you can see in the Properties panel which format we've chosen. If I choose the Code button on the left and click that instead, we get a much better idea of what's going on here. Now what we're looking at is the code view for this page. We're looking at the HTML code that sits behind the page. Now, in effect, every web page you ever look at has code like this that represents it. Now, HTML code nowadays has got a lot more complex than it used to be, and there are many, many options, both in terms of its format, its presentation, and so on. But at its simplest, this is pretty much how websites work. They have pages, and each page has code. And if you look at the code, it doesn't look anything like the web page. OK, you can see in there the words Hello World are in there. And in fact, it's all this code that makes Hello World looks the way it does if I look at the page in Design View. But you never see all the other content, all the other code. 
Now to give you an example of how all this code works, let's go back to Hello World and you'll notice that just in front of it there's a left bracket, a left um, chevron I should say, H3 and a right angle bracket or chevron and then after it the same but with a slash. Now as we're going to see in more detail later on these are called HTML tags. There's an, a sort of start H3 which is the shortcut for heading 3 and there's an end H3 which is the sort of shortcut for end heading 3. And what this statement here really says is heading 3 starts here we've got the words hello world and then heading 3 ends. So hello world is between H3 tags. Now above that there's another similar looking item. It's got P between angle brackets and slash P. The P here is effectively a paragraph marker. So start a paragraph, end a paragraph and in the middle is a space ampersand MBSP semicolon that's the code for a space you'll see that a lot and before that there is a single tag which is body now generally speaking if you have a start tag like body there'll be an end tag and sure enough there it is slash body that's the end of the body and this whole section refers to the body of this web page. Body starts, we have a paragraph that's just got a space in it which is basically the empty line that I put in. Then we've got an H3 tag that says hello world. Then we end the body of the page and that is a whole body section of an HTML page. OK, I've taken a little diversion here to the MSN website. And if you are on this or any other website, you right click on the page and click on View Source. This is Internet Explorer, by the way. Your own browser will have an equivalent of this. You can see the source for that web page. Now, it starts right at the top, doctype HTML it has exactly the same sort of codes but as you can see there's rather a frighteningly large amount of it. Now a lot of this code is actually generated automatically somebody hasn't sat there and typed it all in character by character which is quite reassuring in a way but it still works on the same principle that there are these HTML codes there's a div tag there and then you'll find an equivalent slash div further down. We'll talk about several of these tags later on. But it is basically still the case that when you're looking at a web page, you're looking at something that's represented by HTML code. So here we are back at our own web page. The code on the page begins with this type of statement and it's actually the start of HTML code. I'll talk a little bit about what this statement, the doc type HTML thing at the moment means later on. The important thing at the moment is that there is a tag here HTML which denotes the start of the HTML code itself and the last tag is therefore a slash HTML. So the way the tags work is in a nested fashion. We've seen the body section there. There is also a head section and within the head section you can see the tags head and slash head. We will embed certain very important pieces of information and I'm going to talk about those later on as well. The only one at the moment that's of interest is the title of the document. Now the title of the document is not the file name of something, it's a title which not only is significant to a document or a website itself but also has a significant for things like search engines. So the title is something to really understand and again that's one for later on. The title of the page is displayed in this box at the top here it's currently called untitled document and in fact if I wanted to change the title of the page I could change it in either place so for instance I can just in here type T 
test page as the title. Now watch what happens if I click further down the page. Nothing happens. Supposing I change the H3 tags to H2, H2, but click on refresh and watch what happens. With a refresh everything gets updated, the title is changed to test page and the HTML code change I made there, h2 hello world slash h2 is reflected down here in the properties panel as well. So I can in fact change the things in either place, either in the HTML code itself or where there is a facility to change it elsewhere. So for instance if I wanted to change the title again I could change it here and it would be changed in the HTML code as well. So they are our two very important views of our page. Code view which shows us all of the HTML code that's actually making the page look as it does and in some cases do what it does and then design view which shows us pretty much what it looks like but doesn't give us an idea of what's going on behind the scenes or under the hood. Now there are a couple of other views which are also very important but I want to mention them now because I think it's important to see why neither design view nor code view on their own or even together can tell the whole story. One of the things you will want to be able to do is to test the pages of your site. As you start to get some action going on the site you want to be able to see what it's going to look like for real. And to a large extent you can test this using what's called live view. Now live view, if I click on live view for this page now, there's the button, Live view in this case doesn't really seem to show anything different to design view but that's because there's nothing on this page yet for live view to show. If I had something like a link, a link to another page or another site I would need to be in live view for that link to work. So later on we're going to use live view for some short term testing of some of the features that we put onto pages. Let me switch live view off for now. The other option which you have which is very important is to be able to preview in a browser. And this is the feature whereby you actually look to see what a page is going to look like in one of a selection of browsers. Internet Explorer, Firefox, Google Chrome or whatever. Now it's very important to test your pages in a number of different browsers and particularly with Dreamweaver CS6 some additional features for previewing pages also enable you to test your pages on different types of device. Now this whole subject needs part of the course for itself so we're going to come back to that in a lot of detail later on. So here is our first web page. The window it's in with the tab on it here is called the document window. So this is the whole of this thing. And we normally refer to this along here with the code split, design live buttons and so on as the document bar. This also has things like the multi-screen and preview buttons various other controls we're going to be looking at later on and down at the bottom further controls some status information information about magnification on the page various tools we can use and a resume of where we are in terms of HTML tags all things for later on but basically when we're working on a page we'll normally be looking at something like this So one final thing to say about this particular page, normally when you're working on web pages the first thing you would do would be to save a new web page so that you minimize the chance of losing your work. The saved name of a page is what's displayed on the tab here. This hasn't yet been saved, it's just got a default name of untitled one. To save a page click on file and then one of the options there is save as. 
I'm not really going to bother about this page but what I would normally do is browse to the particular website I'm working on possibly a folder within that website and then I would save the page with an appropriate name which will very often be a name with an HTML extension although depending on various other factors that we will again talk about later on there may be a different extension it could be something like ASP for a particular type of page as well so we'll come back to file naming how we save files where we put them later on but just bear in mind that normally the first thing we're going to do with a new page is to save it with the right sort of name the right sort of extension in the right sort of place so there we are that's been a bit of a lightning quick tour of the main features of Dreamweaver CS6 because it's very important to get started on doing some practical work in the next section we're actually going to start building a website I hope you've got ideas together already for the website you're going to build try not to be too ambitious to begin with but bear in mind you can always make things more complex and put more functionality in later on so I'll see you in the next section